Hi friends and welcome to my nest. Today we are going to be sewing the 12th block of our pressed flower sew along from Fat Border Shop. This is our last one. This is what it's going to look like today. I'm going to be sewing this last block. I'm also going to share my blocks all put together in the quilt and the, some of the changes that I have made. I can't wait to show you what my whole quilt look like. With that being said, we are going to dive in and sew this block, but this may be a little bit of a longer video because I'm just going to just show you my process and also what I have done with all the cutout from the finishing kit. This is the finishing kit right here. This is what it's gonna look like. So we're going to have cut away from all these corners right here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I did with mine and how I'm utilizing it because there were a lot of leftover um, HST, what better known as half square triangle from uh, making the finishing part of this quilt. You guys know that I repurposed my cutaway from my quilt. So, and I also put it to use, I utilize the usable part of my leftovers. So with that being said, let's dive in and start sewing block number 12 of our pressed flower sew along. So if I haven't told you the name of this block yet, this is the name of the block. It's called Love in a Mist. Perfect name for our last block. So, so here are my pieces all cut out here. They don't look like a lot, but when we're all done, this will be a very pretty block like all the other one have. So let me move this aside and sew. So the first thing we're going to do is take four of our E pieces right here okay so we're gonna sew four and we're gonna take our C piece which is our background pieces and we're going to sew like a flip side corner so we're going to sew going from middle left to bottom right just like that and we're going to need to make four of this So here are the four pieces that we needed for our step one. So that part is done. I'm going to put it over there. And so our next thing is taking the last four set of E and we are going to take our D piece, this little teeny tiny piece right here. We are going to snowball the corners first. This is our small piece, so it needs to be precised. It's gonna chain piece. Chain piece is when it just so straight and you just don't cut thread. Just like this. So I have all four of these sewn right here. I did not iron them yet. I just went on ahead and finger pressed it, meaning that I pressed my seam open. So that way when I'm done sewing this corner right here, then I will go in and I will give it a little heat. So what we're gonna do next is sew our F piece right here, which is our pink. We're gonna sew it onto the corner and then we're going to do another snowball like we did here. We're gonna flip it going this way. Okay, so that's what I'm doing now. So now I have this sewn on and this sewn on and I pressed it with an iron is flat. What we're doing now is taking our first step and we're gonna take this pieces right here and we're going to sew them together. So this right here, I'm going to bring it back and I'm going to sew them together. So let's sew on our step number three. All four of them are sewn together. And so this is what they're gonna be looking like right now. Okay, so these are done. I'm gonna put them on the side right there. The next thing we're doing is making our leaf block. So this is our leaf pieces and this is piece G. So we're going to make flying geese. And here we go. So here are my four flying geese all completed right here. So I'm gonna put it aside. This is done. But the next thing we're doing here is sewing a four patch. So we're gonna take our color fabric and our background, another uh, background and our color fabric right there. So I'm gonna sew just a simple four patch and here we go. I'm not even gonna break thread here. See, this is joined together. I'm just gonna fold it over and sew. The next thing we're doing here is we're gonna sew our eight pieces, which are the background 
to the flying geese just like that and that's what i'm going to do now so we're going to do four of them and then i'm just going to chain piece them on so now we have all of our steps right here i'm going to bring my design board and i'm going to bring it here we are going to just assemble our block so i've sewn this right here and i've assembled these the flower part of our block so what i did was rotate them i put them like this and i just kind of rotate them to where the pink is meeting in the middle so what we're doing now is setting up our piece like this and then rotating the flying geese going that way and then we're rotating this going this way and then we're going to put this like so okay so this is what we're going to look like and we're going to take the four patch that we made earlier making sure that it's facing the right direction we're going to sew it like that i'm just going to sew them together making sure that my flying geese is going this way and then the other flying geese is going this way so we're going to sew two of these so i've sewn this together with the flying geese going this way and then i've sewn also this together okay and then these are right here so everything is together right now. So what I'm doing is just literally piecing everything together. And then we're just going to sew on the outer part of it. Okay. And I'll also show you that part as well. So let's sew. This is what our blocks looks like, but we are not going to be finished yet. So since this is our last block, we are going to put the finishing on there. So this is what our finishing looks like. Okay. I've already cut it ahead of time because this is a big piece of fabric. So we have our square. Okay. And we're going to cut diagonal. Now, after we cut diagonally, we're going to have four because this is two squares. So what we're going to do is, so we're going to sew onto all the corners like this. Okay. Let me bring you over so you can see we're going to sew onto the corners like that. Okay. So that's what that's going to look like. So what I'm going to do is flip over. Now this white that I'm using right here is it's the white on white from shine on, and I'm going to bring it closer right here. You can see, the little rainbow right there. This was my leftover from the quote B book by Bonnie and Camille. So this is the leftover from that kit that I'm still using. It's almost like two years old. So that's the leftover. So I didn't have to buy anything for this. So along, I did purchase this because I saw this at my local quote shop and I had to have it. This is the little Ruby from Bonnie and Camille from way back when it's like old, old, old collection right here. We're going to sew this part like this. We're going to sew this part and we're going to sew the corner and then we're going to sew this part right here. So that's what I'm going to do now. And what I'm doing here is pretty much kind of eyeballing it. I can kind of eyeball it and it'll be okay. Since this is white on white, I need to make sure that I'm sewing the right side. And I'm going to bring this back over here and I'm going to eyeball this. All you need to make sure is that you have a little lip out this way because when you go put on that last part going this way, you need to have something to sew it onto. And after this is all done, we still need to trim down to the right size. I will do that as well. So now I'm just going to trim this lip right here. Come here and trim this off. And then I'll do it to all four corners. So I don't have bulk at the end. When you're sewing on half squares, you're going to have that lip that's going to stick out and um, you have to cut them off and it's okay. So right now, this is what our block is looking like and we are not done. So what we're going to do now, we're going to do a sew and flip to all four corners. And I have chosen this red right here. This is also a motor fabric and this is the essential dot. This is like the, uh, it's like a tomato red with white polka dots. And I thought it went well with this right here. Actually, my kids picked this out. So I'm going to do another sew and flip on the corners. And I'm going to just sew this to this and do it on all four of the corners. And then this block will be all finished. Now, this is block number 12. The reason why I'm sewing it from the beginning to the end 
is because this is what our finishing product is going to look like per the pattern here. So when we're done, this is what our quilt is going to look like. To get this look right here in the middle, you kind of have to just, they're asking us to sew this part. It will look like this when we're all done, okay? So let's do that. Now this block right here is mammoth. It's so big. So <laughs> I have my 18 and a half inch ruler to help me kind of measure this and trim. So now I've changed over to a bigger mat. Now what I'm doing now is trying to trim down my block to make sure it is the right size because when you finish sewing it it's going to be a little bit bigger than what they want it to be so what i'm going to do is trim it down to make sure that i don't cut off the little pointy corner right here and i don't point up, cut up the bottom of my bottom piece right here okay so we're going to just corner right there so i have my uh, little line meeting over here i don't think the camera can catch because this is a big big block I'm trying to make sure I got all quarter inch over on all the corners so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and trim to what we're supposed to have it at so I'm just gonna flip this like this bring it back I'm not gonna flip my mat because this mat is extremely too big to be moving around all right so i have on this corner here i have my perfect line where it's supposed to be and now i'm going to cut making sure that over here i'm not cutting off the bottom of my um my flower so what i'm doing now is cutting and i'm cutting really slow because once you cut this that's kind of like that's it i can't take it back so if i mess up at this point that's just going to be it. So here is our block all completed right now. Right here is the block that we sewed today, right? And so this outer part right here was the square that we cut diagonally. And then this was the sewing flip that's, that is on all four corners. I am quite pleased with what the finishing looks like for this, um, for this block. So we're going to make 12 of this block. The finishing corner right here are going to be identical to all 12 blocks. That's why I took my time um, showing you uh, what the process is of completing the finishing part of the blocks. So this is what you're going to make. This is what your finishing blocks are going to look like on all 12 of them. The next thing I'm gonna do is take this to the design board and put it with the rest of the 12 block and I'm gonna show you what all 12 block looks like as a quilt. Now, that's what we're gonna do next let's go do that so i can show you what it looks like i think i'm pretty pleased with how the color kind of jive together and i don't know you be the judge in my humble opinion i'm pretty pleased with how this turned out so but let me take you onto the board and then let me show you what it looks like okay so this is my entire quilt right here from top to the bottom all completed all done and I'm pleased with how the colors kind of work together. It's not too much. I think less is always more in quilts like this because it's a bold and bright colors. The quilt has us using like the light color as the border and I thought it needed a little bit of something. So that's why I added the borders of, you know, with a little bit of color, not too much. But now I'm having second thought. I don't know. You guys comment down below and let me know what you think. If I should rip it out and put something plain because now that I add the fabric, I love the fabric by themselves. I was going to use it for the backing, but I felt like it, make, it makes it look a little dated. So I, I don't know. You guys comment down below and let me know what you think. More than likely, I'm going to leave it in, but I don't know yet. We'll see. So, and as you can see right here, I did not put it in order like the pattern suggested. I didn't put one, two, three, and four because this is block number one and this is block number two. So if I put this and this next to each other, it's the same fabric. So I wanted to break it up. So I put one in the middle and I put two right here and I put three right here. You get the point. And then this one right here is supposed to be here. I didn't want to do that. Because if I do that, this is the same fabric with this. They'll be right on the, 
you know, butt up against each other. And I didn't want to do that. So I kind of like separated it. And this right here, oh, let me move it up some so y'all can see. This block right here is supposed to be over here. And then, then whatever was next to it was going to be the same fabric. So I, um, I moved them. I'm just going to step off the screen and let you see what I did. So this is what I ended up doing. I did the inner border as white and I did outer border using the Camille Ross Kelly's um, new lighthearted line. I just wanted to like kind of add a little bit of something to the borders. Um, that's not too much. So I used add inner border two and a half inches and I put an outer border of four and a half inches. I hope that this is, this has brought you a little bit of idea of what to do with yours, a little something to encourage and inspire you as like, you know, thinking outside the box, choosing your own color. It doesn't always have to be the kit. You can use something from your stash. I want to talk about the cutaway from this right here. So when you sew this one, it's going to be a flip and it's going to be a cutaway on the other side. So these are my cutaway. This is what I have left. And I told you that I was going to show you what I did with mine. What I did was cut them down. And I wanted to let you know that I am sewing along with Pat Sloan in her what's in your closet, the Wednesday blocks. So she wanted us to put the checkerboard and I was like, I didn't want to do checkerboard. So instead of doing checkerboard, I trimmed mine down to three and a half. And I just kind of made a whole bunch of pinwheels and then put them around it. And with her checkerboard, it's supposed to be six and a half. So what I ended up doing was I cut my HST to three and a half and I made pinwheel, which that would, that would equal to six and a half. So from here to here, it's a block. I have five going down and I have four on the bottom. It used up pretty much most of the cutaway, the HST. So I have this much left. Okay. And I have trimmed them down to four inches so I can do anything with this. So I can do three and a half, two and a half, whatever I decide to do later on, this will come in handy. And I think I might just kind of use this in different area of the um, sew along that she's doing. So that's an idea right there. I'm going to use mine up. So with that being said, I hope this has encouraged and inspired you to kind of like get an idea on color placement and how to choose your color and how to kind of like make the quilt your own. So that way you can kind of like, it's just about what you like. So, um, this is my quilt. This is our pressed flower sew along for 2023, 2024, all completed and then next month in April we start another sew along so I cannot wait to um, get my hands on that and I also want you to comment down below and let me know if you want me to do a sew along on that as well thank you so much for joining me in this sew along thank you for watching my videos and thank you for subscribing to my channel and if you have not subscribed yet be sure to subscribe down below give me a thumbs up and click the notification bell with that being said I hope you have a great weekend and I would love to see you in my next video. You have a great day. Bye.